You are now listening to Out of the Blank. 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 I'm welcome. pretty sure you would, but you know, well, look, probably... hey, welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Reza Pierre. Yep. I got it. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> you better not be just telling me I got it and I really didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny is that, uh, like I said, most people, they don't, they don't get it right away, but I mean, they'll, they'll catch on. They'll catch on. Get it after like the 800th try and someone ends up slapping you in the back of the head enough, you figure it out. <laughs> So tell me a little bit about yourself, man, and what do you do professionally? You know, honestly, um, I'm just a normal, well, I guess I can say normal. I'm your average horror movie fan. Uh, <laughs> I do, professionally, I do the podcast show that I call my own. I call it Saw Guy Podcast. Um, Saw Guy, the name is actually a nickname that I was given. Uh <laughs> Funny story with that. It's just because, you know, I've always been a fan of the Saw franchise. So my first tattoo I got, I got a Billy uh, puppet. And once I got a tattoo, I used to wear a tank top. And it was funny because like most people would be like, oh, yeah, you know, that dude, he's the Saw guy, you know, and it just it stuck. (laughs) Um, And so what I started doing is that I do this podcast where I discuss everything about horror movies and stuff, you know, and that's usually my hobbies, my interests. I love doing, you know, behind the scenes where I'm not doing that. Um, I went through school to do medical and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, currently I, I, I do, you know, your basic run of the mill, you know, nine to five job and things like that. But, um, you work so, at a Halloween store, don't you? Or a seasonal store? Yep. I, uh, I, it's actually, well, it's a party store, but I got into it because of the fact of Halloween. Cause Halloween's obviously my favorite holiday. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're not called the saw guy. And then you'd say my favorite Halloween or my favorite uh, holidays, uh, Christmas. That'd be a little bit different. <laughs> That'd be weird. You know, I don't think there's too many of the those people out there that are like, yeah, you know, they're horror films and, you know, then all of a sudden they like Christmas stuff, you know. Um, th- those are few and far between. <laughs> Do you think, all right, so how did you get, how did you, first of all, not only start a podcast on it, but how did you get, uh, become a fan of horror? It was it something as a, a kid, you know, a lot, I've had, I've heard stories of horror enthusiasts that come from, you know, getting a, a certain concussion. The next thing you know, they were uh, introduced um, to kind of stay awake. Like they were, you know, cause you don't want to sleep when you go into a concussion that his mm-hmm. mom put on a certain horror flick and he watched Jaws and then he was just addicted to horror after that. And he ended up becoming like, you know all into it so how did you start oh shit that that's that kind of reminds me like the superhero way where spider-man gets bitten (laughs) um i didn't really get it into like that i mean straight up i got into it since i was a kid the earliest thing i can remember i think i was about two or three years old and growing up the way that we had it is that it was me my older sister and i have two other siblings but you know they weren't there at that time but um, my mom and dad, you know, we lived the average life of just basically going through and, you know, living life. And, you know, the thing that we would do is that my mom, you know, she was a stay at home mom. She cooked dinner and everything. My dad, he'd get home late. He'd get home like at nine or 10 o'clock. Um, and the way that we would bond together, you know, to spend time as a family, we always put on movies. Um, at the time in the eighties, this is like, you know, 88, 89. Um, you know, so, I mean, towards the end of the eighties. But I mean, what we would do is that, uh, HBO and Showtime had just came out on, you know, cable streaming or on the cable channels and things like that. Six ninety nine for a fucking movie. I remember. Those <laughs> days. Oh my God, dude. Yeah. And the way that they would do is that they would order it, but they would have those old school VHSs in the V VH, in the VHS player. And I remember my dad, he made a big deal about like, you know, hey, this is the VHS player. It's going to bring us together and stuff like that. Because that's how they marketed it. And it was true. Um, They would get these blank tapes and record all these movies, like in between. So, I mean, you know, you have a six-hour VHS tape with like three or four movies on it. Um, And we would record all these movies. And then when my dad would come home, we'd eat dinner, you know, spend time. And a lot of people thought we were uh, vampires. (laughs) Because, I mean, we did this all late night, you know. So, my dad would come home, you know, we eat. we clean up the mess. And it was like 1130. Then we would just watch horror movies, basically. I mean, we would start watching it, you know, everything from the classics, Fright Night, Tremors. uh, And we would watch them so much that, you know, by the time 
I can remember, I think it was maybe within a couple months, all of us were already quoting the movie, <laughs> you know, as a joke between us, you know, and you know, they didn't think that was too much for you just being at a young age. Oh, no. I mean, my parents, it's funny because they expose us to everything, you know, so I mean, the only thing that you couldn't see is, you know, growing up as a kid, whenever they show the nudity scenes or you see a pair of boobs, they're all like, okay, cover your eyes. You know, as a kid, you put your hands, you know, over yeah, your eyes. You can then- wa- your parents would let you watch <laughs> someone get their head chopped off, but would not let you see a pair of tits. Right? I mean, it was the 80s, dude. That, that's that's how it was. You know, it's like, okay. I'm not even from the 80s, but my parents live that way, man. My parents were <laughs> like, look, we can watch this guy get his head chopped off, get his dick sliced off, whatever. But as soon as the pair of tits pop up, you shield your eyes. I'm like, what, yeah. are, we, what are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah. I'm going to look through my fingers anyway. Do you think my hand, like, I'm <laughs> honestly going to keep it closed the whole time? Exactly, man. I mean, that's... I, that, that's the way I would tell everybody. I mean, that's what kind of separates like the men from the boys. Like when you first see, ah, can we talk? When you first see a pair, you're just like, whoa, what is that? <laughs> you know, and that, that's, that's what got us really hooked on it, man. Cause I mean, we watched, I mean, shit. Um, we watched half of these movies so much, dude, that the tapes would wear out. And with that being said, it's just, you know, we carry that tradition on after my uh, two younger sisters, you know, were born and stuff like that. And we did it all the way up until about 2010, you know, where we would just sit down and watch a horror film. I mean, later on through life, it got less and less, you know, as we got older and stuff like that. But we would still watch everything from, you know, the same classics to like random ones that most people haven't heard. And I've even done some, uh, some of those movies, you know, for Saw Guy podcasts. And, you know, one of them is John Carpenter's first film that he did like right before he did Halloween. It's called Eyes of Laura Mars. And I remember that film vividly because Tommy Lee Jones is in it and he, n- he doesn't fucking age. <laughs> he still looked the same, you know? He has um, always looked 50. Right? You know, and even back in the 70s, man, he still looked the same. Same haircut, same everything, you know? He just had no gray on him. Do you um, think, okay, so was there ever any super impactful horror films that like you're like our number one favorites, but mostly because of the experience you had when watching it? You know, there was a few. Um, I know for a fact, the ones that I always think of is Fright Night and Tremors, because we would watch those all the time. And Tremors, my mom would love that just because of the fact that, you know, she had the hots for Kevin Bacon at the time. So she was like, oh, that's Kevin Bacon, you know, and she would always suggest that we watch Tremors. So anytime I see Tremors, I always think of that, you know, then we always quote it, you know, (laughs) scenes from the movie, whether it's with Bert or with Kid. uh, What's the kid's name? Melvin. You know, so I remember growing up as a kid. If I pissed my mom off or whatever, it was funny. She would joke with me and say, I quit acting like Melvin. It's like, oh, hell no. What? (laughs) I always remember uh, my parents, they got me a Chucky doll when I was little, and I did not know what it was or what that was from. And I was like, okay, they're watching a movie called Chucky. And I know I have a doll that's named Chucky. I was like, okay. So I peeked around the corner, you know, watching because mm-hmm. they told me to go to my bed. It was too much of a graphic movie. I couldn't see it. I'm a little kid, dude, like maybe four or five. I see that it's a fucking doll murdering people. And I threw that thing out the window. Oh, shit. My dad found it the next day on his way to work. He gets up in the morning, gets up at like 6 a.m., comes out. There's just Chucky chucked on the front lawn. I'm like, no. Fuck you. <laughs> Why would you do that to me? It's like, well, I guess you oh, saw the movie, shit. didn't you? And I was like, I saw enough. I also saw Friday the 13th peeked around a corner in the hallway, just staring oh, into cool. the family room, looking at Friday the 13th. Like, oh, and then they, my parents would wonder why I was so afraid to get off my bed because I thought some motherfucker was going to grab me by my ankles. <laughs> oh, shit, man. When you brought up Chucky. I'm not going to lie to you because I know that was another impactful movie that really kind of screwed me up a little bit as a kid. It because- scares you from dolls, even as adults. I don't right? at my, look. I have a grandparent that has nothing but those little like uh, the knickknacks, the little dolls that sit on a dresser. So she has a whole shelf of them. Oh, I the porcelain dolls. God, I will walk around either the porcelain. Uh, yeah, they're porcelain and they have some of the wood ones, too. <laughs> I swear to God, I walk in there. The heads just turn. Oh, shit. And you hear him just like dead silence, turn around, and the eyes stare at you. I wouldn't sleep in that room, dude. I had to move them all out. I remember she had the little rascals. I chucked all those things in a trash can. Oh, shit. She's like, you, don't, you think alfalfa is going to kill you, Robbie? I said, I don't care. I don't care. This is, this is not something I'm going to roll the dice about. Yeah, you don't take a chance of that. Hell no. I mean, even if you had the door cracked and everything like that, they got some magic power to slam that door shut, lock it, and go after you. 
it's, what are it's some, true. What are some <laughs> underrated horror films that you find that really kind of slip through the cracks in people's minds? Oh, man, that's a good question. You know, honestly, um, some of the hidden jewels that I remember seeing was, you know, of course, Eyes of Lower Mars. Um, a lot of, like I said, because a lot of people didn't hear about that film. John Carpenter, he got famous right after it. And, you know, to this day, he still brushes it under the water because they bought the script for him. And they were going to use it to film it with Barbara Streisand. Well, Barbara Streisand read it and she didn't like it. She said it was too violent. And so it became a hit. But John Carpenter, he was just like, ah, I don't want to, you know, use that film in, you know, say that I did that or whatever. So that's why he broke away and did Halloween. So that's one of them. Another one that I really liked was Silver Bullet. That's such an underrated one for what it is, because that story, I don't know. Have you seen Silver Bullet before? I have not. Oh, man, dude. It's about the werewolf. So, yes, it's about a werewolf. It's from Stephen King. And here's the twist on it. There's a killer werewolf that he's killing these people. And he's killing these people because, you know, they send in ways, you know, like this lady, she, you know, she gets knocked up you know, out of wedlock, you know, with this dude and she's trying to tell him about the baby. And he's like, it's not my bun cooking in your oven. You got to deal with it. You know, there was a scene where it shows that. And so she was all worried about it. So instead of, you know, having the baby out of wedlock, cause it was, you know, taking place in the seventies or sixties, uh, she decided to try to kill herself. And then that's when the werewolf comes in and kills her, you know, so that way she doesn't sin. And then later on you find out in the story that it was a priest playing a werewolf. And I was like, Holy shit, that's a weird twist. You know? Um, this was Corey Haim's first film and it had, and also starred Gary Busey, you know, before he got into his motor accident. So, I mean, he had that crazy kooky, you know, uncle, cause we all have one of those, you know, in our lifetime. Um, but I, and I could relate to this film of it. And that's, you know, one of another underrated film that I believe, um, more or less, I would say the ones that doesn't get the attention is, you know, you look at ones like Manhunter. You ever heard of Manhunter? Nope. That's actually, you heard of Red Dragon, right? Nope. No? It's, well, Red Dragon and Manhunter, it's the same movie, except uh, Manhunter came out first, and it's the first story of the Hannibal Lecter series. Oh, so, shit. Yeah, it's crazy, because it stars, uh, what's his name? William Peterson. He's the guy who plays Gil Grissom in the CSI Las Vegas. And what's cool about it is that um, he plays, like, you know, a retired cop. You know, he's done with the force and everything. And then there's this weird, sick killer, and he's killing these people. But He's killing them in weird ways where he like gouges out their eyes and shit. And so he's trying to chase after this killer. And then he goes, you know, talking to Hannibal Lecter. Well, Hannibal Lecter was played by a different actor when it first started out. It wasn't Anthony Perkins or not Perkins, uh, Hopkins. And, you know, it, it was kind of weird how they did the whole story because it was it was so low budget. But I mean, it was like spooky, scary, the way how it would show like the killer kill the people. And the main killer was played by the guy. uh God, I can't remember his name on top of my head, but he was the bad guy from RoboCop 2, Kane. And so that actor, I mean, he's already kind of weird in his own way, like his acting style, like he could play a good bad guy. Um, you know, the fact that he came out in this film was just like, holy shit, you know? <laughs> and then in the background, they start playing Inagata de Vida, which makes it even more like crazy. But I mean, there's a lot of other ones too, like... Um, well, My there's other a one fascinating then. thing about horror culture in general, mostly where we've seen it change today. It seems like now the whole basis is jump scares. They don't have any really storyline behind them anymore. I like the older school um, horror films based on it made you really actually scared rather than just something jumping out at you. I mean, anybody can be scared by something just jumping out at you. Yeah. But, you know, it seems the same concept over and over again. There was no originality to it. Like I remember a really good horror movie from back in the day, like uh, Idol of Hands. I know that was supposed to be a parody movie, but it was still something a little bit freaky. And then you saw The Lost Boys, you know? Yes. Like oh, nobody man. really remembers that movie. I remember like the people, like the kid floating, like, cause he was a vampire and could fly and he couldn't control it. And he's in his room, like, help me, like screaming to his brother. And then his brother was like sleeping with garlic around his neck. Like there were so many things <laughs> in that movie, little small details to it that played in the giant overall impact of like just the, the whole movie and now yeah. you see shit where everyone's just like no we're just gonna do jump scares it's no original concept like you know when everything's coming it's really hard to get scared in a movie theater anymore i only start getting scared when mm -hmm. it comes to mental health when Ooh. i see a motherfucker like in the shining and you can't really <laughs> tell if jack nicholson is actually a psychopath or not 
Mm -hmm. Like that is what gets me. I start getting nervous. Like I saw the visit with the grandparents by M night Shyamalan. That one started freaking me out when I realized, (laughs) Oh my God, these people are batshit crazy. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny how you brought that up because horror has changed over the years. And I think it changed, you know, towards the mid to late nineties. Cause there was that swing of things where everything was straight to video. Everything was a gym. And in the nineties, I don't know. Nineties was a weird time. They changed everything and, and horror almost essentially was being killed off. And then scream came out and kind of changed it. And with that being said, scream had a lot of different jump scares into it. It was just like, okay, you hear a noise and all of a sudden you turn around, boom, there's a the killer, you know? Um, scream, scream got ruined for me. Cause uh, really? I saw scary movie before I saw oh. <laughs> So then now I started watching Scream and I was like, all right, come on. Where's the fucking jokes? Yeah. You're where's, like, okay. where's Doofy? Where's Doofy? I'm thinking of that scene right now where he's hiding behind the curtains. And he's like, can you find me? And then he's laughing. And she's like, um, you're behind the couch. And he's like, shit. <laughs> all right, turn around, turn around, turn around. Where, where am I now? <laughs> well, you're behind the curtain. How do you know? I can see your shoes. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, man. You know, and it's funny because uh, for a while, too, I mean, I got out of Scream because of that movie, too, because, I mean, they would play it all the time. I remember seeing Scary Movie in theaters. That shit was funny as hell, dude. But, you know, now there it has been some films here and there that have been pretty scary. Some that's actually rocked me to the core. And I'm going to be honest with you. Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses. <laughs> yes. I saw that oh. when I was 14 years old at a fucking bike shop. No shit. A bike shop. I used to hang out there and repair bikes and stuff. I used to hang out with the guy there. We'd just chill and like, you know, he'd be like, hey, here's $10. Why don't you go get us some subs from the deli down the street and then we'll ride mm-hmm. back. And I'm like, okay. So I'd come by. We'd just sit there, like eat lunch. I'd spend like my summer days up there if I wasn't working or something. And it would just be nice to chill. And he would put in these old VHS tapes and like, you know, he'd help me work on my bike and stuff, but also get, you know, his stuff done. Uh, mm-hmm. Shout out to him, Mike Layfield. And um, he was showing me all these uh, VHS videotapes. And he's like, you ever see Rom Zabi's House of a Thousand Corpses? So we're in the middle of this fucking bike store. People are coming in, looking at bikes and stuff. And I'm watching freaking this guy take off this girl's dad's face, put it on his own, and go up to him and go, (laughs) who's her daddy? I'm like, holy (laughs) hell, what is I'm the one who brings you the candy when you're being good. Who's your daddy? Good God, man. <laughs> That's funny that you bring that up because that was my uh, Halloween special episode, man. And watching that film, I freaking love it because um, I'm from Fresno and out here in California. And Captain Spaulding over here, he's like a local legend because he, he, he was born and raised here and he had a house over here. And uh, interesting enough, he lived actually down my street. So I would see him from time to time and everybody would see him all around town, you know, at some of these local restaurants that we have. And uh, it's pretty cool because, I mean, when that film came out, everyone was at first was just like, huh? You know, because there's a story with it. There were people that were like, this is way too much. This needs to be like these directors need to be found. And, you know, rip uh, rest in peace, Sid Haig, man, because it's you know, that was a good role. Like you never been into a grocery store and, you know, ask for something. And the guy's just like, well, go fuck yourself. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. (laughs) Fuck your mama. Yeah, you never see that shit, you know? that That's what's crazy about it. And I, that's what's cool about what Sid Haig did, because I know I've, I've been a fan of his work, too. I mean, a lot of the stuff, because I like a lot of old school, like, 80s TV shows. You know, um, a lot of people think that most of the things that I do, everything is 100% horror, but um, I do like a lot of other stuff. I got in for a while watching um, Knight Rider, A-Team. And what's interesting enough is that right after he passed, um, I was watching this TV channel. It's a L Ray channel on TV and they were doing an 18 marathon. And all of a sudden, as I was, you know, um, I kind of use it as like, cause when I go to sleep, I got to hear something, you know, when I go to sleep, it's just more of a comfort thing. So I leave the TV on. You don't I listen to like bloody screams, do you? Um, depends if I'm working on an episode, like right now, <laughs> um, I'm, wor- I'm watching this movie. I don't want to spoil it because I haven't announced it yet for the show, but I'm watching this movie. And in the beginning, you know, you hear all the screams. Ah, help! You know, sometimes I can. Other times I'm like, eh, all right, I'll put on, you know, A-Team or 
Um, hey man, I can relate. My Netflix, uh, if you look at my watch history, it's comedy special, comedy special, true crime, <laughs> freaking murder documentary. Then it's not, it's comedy special. Like if you looked at the times of when I was watching these, there's there's like because I know other people who are on your account can view it as well. Mm-hmm. My buddy will click on mine and he goes, "Why the fuck is your browsing history nothing but comedy specials?" Then like. Uh, Hotel Transylvania, and then you're watching nothing but true crime specials. I'm like, I don't know. It's just I get moments like it's one o'clock in the morning. I want to watch somebody try and unravel a murder. <laughs> exactly, you're trying to solve a case, right? He's no, like, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, and it's always the guy that they always say it's. It's never the person you expect. No, it's the fucking person you expect a hundred percent of the time. Little Jimmy. Yeah is a little bit weird, goes in his basement all the time, and then the neighborhood pets start going missing. It's fucking Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's not Bill who's who's out and being public to the community. No, it's Jimmy, okay? Yeah, and, and they try to play it off and build it all up, and it's like, here's the twist. And, you know, it, it was little Jimmy, and it's like, yeah, well, we kind of knew that. I mean, <laughs> he's a little weird out there, you know? Um, that That's cool, dude, because I know for a fact, like, for me, I don't know, like, because I know with Netflix, you know, I've watched everything on Netflix. I have a lot of free time outside of, you know, when I'm not working or whatever. So I always leave Netflix on and I'm like, ah, shit, I watched everything, you know? So I'll put on Hulu because I like Hulu because they'll play like different things and I just shuffle it at random. So one, you know, one minute it's watching Rick and Morty. The next minute it's watching like, you know, Friday the 13th and it does something random, you know? Um, but I know for, for a fact, like when I go to sleep, I always like to hear like, um, just like some kind of noise, you know, because um, as long I don't as think it's I'm, not the uh, the fuzzy snow on your television when it's not finding a channel, it's just that static. Oh, fuck that! Because no. as soon as that pops up, I start getting anxiety of the poltergeist. Oh yeah, dude! I I get up real quick and I I change that shit. Or you know, if something stays on repeat, like uh, I used to watch it like stuff on DVD. So when the movie was done, it would kick back into the menu and it would like replay that same like five second clip of like you know, the scary scenes like Devil's Rejects. When I was doing an episode for it, I would fall asleep, you know, watching it. Cause I would, what I do for my, every episode, I watch a movie at least like 15, 20 times. So I see it from every different angle. And I remember I fell asleep one time to Devil's Rejects and in the DVD menu, you, you hear, you know, Mama Firefly, we'll get you, we'll get you. And the music gets hella loud. And where I sleep in my bedroom, I have like the surround sound. So I have speakers like next behind my bed, in front of my bed all that stuff. And, and it's funny. Cause like, I'll go to sleep. Then all of a sudden there'll be a loud point and I jump up. I'm like, Oh shit, what the hell is this? You know? And it's kind of like the snow effect, like you brought up, dude. Um, but I mean, most of the time, like for me, I don't think I made it public, but I, I think I have a couple of times, but on my show, um, I do this thing at the end where I sign off and a lot of people, it was kind of controversial at first because what I do is that I do like a finger gun to the head and I always do it on the right side and click off. And, you know, when I started doing that, it was more or less for like an editing thing because of the fact of like, that's how I knew the ed- video was done. Cause I do everything on house. I do my own editing promotion, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, what's crazy is that like, it's a little wink out to people that know me because I've had 52 ear surgeries and I'm completely deaf in my right ear. And, you know, so sometimes I can hear things, sometimes I can't, <laughs> but I mean, if that shit's loud and vibrating, like, you know, that usually ca- catches me off guard. One of the films that really got me since, you know, since we were talking about recent horror films and stuff was insidious. Did you ever see that one? I did. Oh, did that scare the shit out of you? I uh, dude, horror movies. It's so hard for me to get scared. The only time I ever get scared is when it comes to mental health, man. I'll tell you, like I had people, I went to go see everything. I went to go see insidious in theaters. I saw conjuring mm-hmm. in theaters. So all this in theaters. I was the only one in there that was just watching the screen. Like, okay. When is it going to actually get me scared? I'm looking over. Everybody's in the theater, like cuddled up, like they need a blanket. I'm like, what is, why are you guys scared? Like you're 42 years old, sir. Why are you, why are you, why are you doing that? And I just, I don't know. I've just kind of been ignored to it mostly because what I know that is like real and what I know that can hurt me is like the fact that there is a mental health issue in America. So I see that I'm like, Oh shit, that person suffers from schizophrenia. It just got real. Like when it starts to get real like that, I start mm-hmm. to get nervous as hell. Oh yeah. You know, and it's, I, I don't blame you on that because I mean, that's the stuff that, you know, when you think about it, that's real versus what could be made up, you know, especially stuff like the shining, you know, when, when you brought that up, you know, I was thinking about it right now was the fact of like, 
you never know what goes through someone's psyche. You know, at a minute, they can be talking to you fine and kind of zone out and hearing your voice and stuff like that. But deep down, they're probably thinking, all right, got to wait till he turns his back, you know? And it's just, it's crazy to think that, you know, because I mean, it does happen. And it's you know, funny I, when you get done watching a horror movie, how you would, you play it out in your head, how you would have act, acted towards it. Exactly. Like you see the two little girls walking down the hallway that are twins, like exactly alike and like, come to me. I'm like, okay, I'd run up and drop kick them both. <laughs> And that yeah. right there. Yeah, given the old school macho man elbow drop. Oh yeah. yeah. You know? The cream rises to the top. <laughs> oh shit. That's how it's funny, dude. I'm telling you, man, like if Jack Nicholson was like, little pig, little pig, let me in. I just open up the door with like a freaking, I don't know, something. <laughs> I grab a shower curtain, be like, let's go, bro. Let's do it. If I'm dying, I'm going out like a champ. Oh shit. You know, it's funny that you brought that up, man, because Knowing me, I'm the type of person that probably would egg on shit. You know, he would say that, and I'd probably be like the Green Jelly song. Not by the hair of a chinny chin chin. <laughs> it's funny because if you look at, like, where we've gone as a society today, imagine Friday the 13th. You're with a group of friends at a lake, mm -hmm. at, like, a camp or something. They're not – your friends are going to ditch you so fast. Oh, yeah, dude. It's not going to be like how it is in the movie. Everyone's going to be, you know, out for themselves. Like, fuck this guy. <laughs> and why the yeah. fuck would you split up? Yeah. That, that makes was, no sense. I know, you know, and that, that's the thing that kind of always hindered some movies because they follow that same cliche, you know, where like the virgin always lives or they always have to split up or this or this or that, you know? You just um, have to make a plan in your head. We're all exactly. going to stay together. Jason shows up. Somebody's getting killed. So we, all the rest of us, while that person's getting brutally murdered, we need to try and hit this guy over the head with something or try and cripple him some way. And then we can get out and someone has to basically die. <laughs> so you look at the least liked person in the group. Who's got the most follows on Instagram? Okay. <laughs> well, Jim's got the least. So Jim, you drew the short straw. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know, I like how you brought that up. Who has the least amount of followers? I would have been like, oh, shit. Then everybody would all turn their eyes and stare at him. Well, fuck, I guess I got to take one for the team. We're not drawing <laughs> straws anymore. What happened to that concept? Yeah, I'm like, oh, shit. That's cool, though. You modernized it right there, man. That was the twist. I'm telling you. <laughs> let me tell you. What really keeps kind of uh, horror alive, like horror's meant for certain, obviously, a certain time for it. Like when it starts coming into October, it's just mm -hmm. in the air. Horror oh, movies, yes. you get to see that rise. It was yes. weird when they made Krampus. Because mm -hmm. it was a Christmas season, but I think they did a pretty good job of it. But oh, yeah. what's one thing that's always around that is always introducing horror, and it's a kid show? Uh, that it's a kid show? Scooby Doo. Oh, no shit. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, man. Right that, that is a giant influence in a lot of people's lives when it comes to just horror in general. It's, yeah. mostly, it's supposed to make you scared, but it's also supposed to show you that behind every monster, there's a mask. That's a good point. You know, I mean, honestly, when I was growing up, Scooby-Doo was okay. I mean, I, I kind of got into it kind of not, you know, but it, the most of the stuff that I really got into as a kid that they had was... Um, I was kind of like one of those kids that liked to read, <laughs> you know, because I was always the one that like, you know, I got into horror books, I guess you could say, like with scary stories to tell in the dark. Um, they had these other random ones called Fright Times in a Dark, Dark Room. And I remember like I would get hooked on those because of the fact you see these like weird looking art covers and stuff. You know, and back in the 90s, there, was, there wasn't that many filters for kids. I mean, kids would be watching shit all the time, you know, whether it was like, you look at, uh, what was it like, Are You Afraid of the Dark and Goosebumps? They had death involved in it where like kids actually get killed in some of the episodes. I was like, oh shit, you can't do that now these days, you know? But I know um, I would get into like different books and stuff because my thing was growing up was, you know, if you let your imagination run wild and that that's the scary part, you know, cause then you start thinking things like you read the story and stuff like, Hey, is somebody watching you? Could somebody follow you? Things like that. Bro. If you start thinking about it, it's just, whew. we've all seen saw. Yeah. We've all seen that. All right. We're going to hit onto this. Cause I think it doesn't make you a serial killer. If you've tried to design Saul from his perspective, like, well, how would I do this to somebody? <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me you haven't had that thoughts. I'm not the only maybe psychopath in the room here. Because I've thought, like, imagine a giant hallway filled with nothing but Legos and you have to walk barefoot. 
Oh man, that'd be fucking terrible, That's dude. That's like, worse than getting your hand chopped <laughs> off. You're just like, fuck. Oh my god. That's you know, one movie that can still be produced today, and nobody is still like, "That's too much. That's too much." Like, I feel like Saul just made it in in mm-hmm. the right time period, and now they can keep producing stuff without people really questioning it or wanting to take it down. Exactly. You know, because when Saw came out, I remember what it first came out way back in the day as an independent film, and I only saw it because uh, I have a cousin that works out in Hollywood, and he does like editing and stuff like that. He was like, "Hey, I had tickets to go see this film called Saw. Since you like horror movies, you want to go see it?" And I remember seeing it, and I was like, "Oh shit, this is gonna be a franchise because you know exactly what you said. You know, you can keep making these movies and have like good twists into them with different traps." And sure enough, they did that. You know, for the first ten years till they remade, uh, you know, the last one, and they have a new one coming out, but. You know, it's funny that you brought that up because I remember I was, I'm the, always the quiet one. And when I used to do work in warehousing, people would joke with me. They're all like, hey, you know, um, five bucks says Addison's going to be the first one to snap and pull a saw shit on us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it, it was funny because if you think about it, um, you're, you're right on the money with that, man. You know, because I mean, we've all had those thoughts. But I mean, that's kind of brutal. I, w- I wasn't going to go as dark like you said with the Legos and shit. I'm like, man, dude, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, that, that that like you're not you know, you're not you're not getting out at that point. I mean, no. Saul it's designed like, the games to basically you couldn't win, but at the yep. same time, it was like if you got the Legos there, you just don't want to win. You're like, what's fucking winning if I'm going to be in so much pain? <laughs> <laughs> I think of it as like if someone's walking through like a pit of lava, you know, so they're getting all gut like their feet all chopped up and shit, and they start crawling on their hands and knees, and then now their legs and hands and shit are all getting tore up. <laughs> Kind of like the needle bit trap, like, ah, you know, and you're trying to slide through without getting, you know, getting any cuts and shit. Did you like Cabin in the Woods? You know, honestly, I thought it was a good play on the concept of like the virgin always gets to live and that whole kind of folklore type of sacrificial stuff. But I mm -hmm. like the concept of how they added all like kind of the hard things you've seen throughout history in it. You know, it's. I honestly like the concept. I think the execution wasn't done in a way that intrigued me. I don't know if that makes sense. Like for me, they they definitely did a little bit more comedy where there probably should have been a little bit more horror. And, you know, I get the comedy route because the thing that I will tell you is that when I do my show, if I try to do serious stuff, it's hit and miss. But if I tie it in with a little bit of comedic in there, like everybody loves it. I I think it's just because they see it as a way of like dark humor. You know, and for me, for the longest time, even to this day, I'm not really a fan of, you know, comedy films. Like, I don't, I don't, you know, that's not my number one go to, but I do like dark humor in, you know, horror films. And Cabin in the Woods was just one of those niche ones. You know, I like the concept. I did like some of the story. I, you know, the only thing that kind of like made me scratch my head was like, okay, why do they have Thor in this movie? <laughs> you know? Oh, um, shit. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, I mean, because he had just did Thor. Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. Yeah. You you looked at it, you were like, all right, so we got Thor Mm -hmm. in this horror film. And then then you can't deter him from that anymore. You just see Thor all the time. Every time it pops up, break out the hammer. Where the fuck's your hammer? (laughs) And the way that he went out, where he's like, all right, I'm going to jump across. And then he runs and hits this, like, I was not expecting that at all dude neither did i I. i'll give you that because i'll i literally when he hit that wall and went down and they were like what the fuck (laughs) i was like i was even saying what the fuck i looked at the thing i was like how did that happen i thought he was just gonna not make it that's what i was expecting to happen and then that happened i was like no way yeah you know and i thought because he got top billing in that film like they promoted that film like oh you know chris hemsworth he's in this film i thought okay he's gonna be the one that's gonna survive they're going to carry on this as a franchise for this film with him starring in it. I thought it was a great twist when, you know, when they killed him off. And I was like, oh, shit. No, you know, I, knew they were, I knew they were going to kill him off. I knew that girl was going to survive to the ending, but I didn't think everybody was going to die. Uh, and that ending, though, man, I, I loved how they're in the elevators and all the shit's out. And then all of a sudden just everything comes out. Everyone's worst fears. I was like, oh, shit. You it know, it's just a good concept, though, of like. I feel like people want to see people kind of tortured in a way. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not oh, yeah. 
get to see it more in society when it comes to just emotional torture. But when they were literally watching these people suffer, they turned it into a game and like a betting pool. And the guy's like, yeah, it's dark, but you know, you get used to it. I'm like, it's literally like if you can, you can watch it happen to animals, you can watch like experimentation happen to animals. And then mm-hmm. we're a little bit turned off when it comes to people. But now you can see people become some more desensitized to where they can experiment on people that just don't look like them. Yeah. And you know, it's crazy that you brought that up too, because um, since I'm going to bring this back into the whole aspect of Saw, because when Saw came out and it was worldwide released in 2004, there's a little known film that came out at the end of the year, early 2005. I don't know if you've heard of this film or seen it. It's called Hostel. Have you heard of that one? I have. Oh man, dude. I remember when that one came out and they were saying Quentin Tarantino presents an Eli Roth production, Hostel. And then you see the trailer of people getting tortured. Like it would show like glimpses of it. And I remember I was one of the very few people to go see it that first opening night. And um, I remember going with my little sister because I know my mom was like, oh, your sister wants to see that movie too, you know? Um, my uh, younger sister, not the youngest, but third one, because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the middle-aged child or the middle child. <laughs> my mom would say, okay, well, she wants to go with you to see it. I'm like, I don't think she can hang with this one. But it was funny because, you know, watching her reaction, she was like, like what you were saying, she was getting kind of, you know, like, oh my God, that's what they're doing, you know? Um, Cause they showed pretty graphic scenes, man. And I mean, at that time, a lot of people weren't like desensitized by it because they were more or less like, holy shit, like this is a film like that. And um, they made films like that before. Some really brutally intense ones. Um, you Have you ever seen this movie called Cannibal Holocaust? Yeah, I have. Ooh, have you seen the full uncut where it shows with the animals and people and everything in there? No, because I was, I was, uh, this was a little bit back in the day. I was still a kid and I was like, fuck, as soon as you start seeing animals and shit start dying, you're like, mm-hmm. okay. Like what steered me off of Halloween? As soon as mm-hmm. the kid was killing animals in the beginning, I was like, nope, turn it off. We're done. <laughs> oh, I'll watch a person die before I watch an animal die. Exactly. But you know, what's crazy is that like they did that back in the day and they'll do it from time to time they do it as a shock value because they know that most people they're exactly how you think, you know, I I would turn it off and not see an animal get hurt before anybody else. You know what I mean? But I know that film, it what's so crazy is that it's so brutal. And because it's so controversial, they even made a different version of it called uh, the animal cruelty free version of it, which is crazy. Was it sponsored by the SPCA? um, I don't know if that is or not from the SPCA. You know, I I think it was, (laughs) Possibly. I'm, I'm kidding. I just, oh. I, just I laugh because those commercials can be done so much better if they were just like playing a song like murder. <laughs> like how many people would buy animals after that? Like you'd be like, oh, oh shit, they're going to kill all these animals. <laughs> you know, it's funny too, is that as much as me being a horror fan, a lot of people never assume that I would be like an animal lover. I love animals to death, man. I, I've had, you know, 10 cats and four dogs at one point in my life. And, you know, now to this point, I had three cats and a dog. And I love them to death. They're like my kids. But I know sometimes they, they kind of drive me up the wall because, you know, they're, they're all indoors. I, I don't let them go out or anything like that. So it, it's funny. Like, I have a cat. What he likes to do, his thing is, you know, he likes to turn on faucets and flush toilets all night. You know, so I'm trying to sleep and I hear the toilet flush. And part of me is thinking like, okay. I know I live alone. I don't know what the hell is the toilet flush. And then I get up and I see, and I turn on the light and I see my cat staring at me. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing fucking with the toilet? <laughs> like, probably staring at you because you're wearing a saw mask, man. Um, you know, and that's funny too that you bring that up because everywhere I go, I'm always in a mask. It's just something with me that I always have to wear the mask and I joke with people about it. I, I've done a face reveal like once or twice. I actually recently did one. But well, on you Halloween. do that because I'm guessing you probably have like an inner kind of turmoil with your looks in a way. I mean, I'm kind of the same way. I work out every single day. I've done it for mm-hmm. seven years and I haven't missed one only on the concept of I was picked on through high school for being like overweight and stuff. So I mm-hmm. learned to kind of fuel it in my own way. But like it bothers me sometimes still today. You know, it's hard for me to take a shirt off when I go and take a shower. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of like that with me, to be honest with you. It, it's just... With me, it's not that I have any scars or anything like that. It's just um, I have something very unique about me that, like, not many people really have. And I think it's kind of a distraction because I know when I started this podcast with with Saw Guy Podcast, I decided, okay, well, one, I want to wear a mask to kind of be private and kind of, you know, hide my tattoos, which is why I wear an armband because I get asked a lot, why are you wearing the armband? And I'm like, well, it's because I'm hiding my tattoos for privacy, (laughs) 
because I did a podcast before locally in town and I would get recognized everywhere. And so I thought, okay, well, I'm wearing the mask and this and this and that. But the main reason why I wear it is because my eyes, um, I, I take after my mom and my older sister has it too. Our eyes are naturally yellow and they'll change to green. It, it's weird. Sometimes it changes with mood. Sometimes it doesn't. And I remember doing like a test footage where I was just, I did the plain mask, covered my face, had my eyes open. And it was a distraction because I was like, oh shit, my eyes changed like from yellow to green in this. And you know, if I caught it, I know like the viewers and the fans, they would catch that too. So I was like, okay. And it's just, for me, I've always, I wouldn't say self-conscious about it, but it's that's more or less a, that's like- That's a distinctive trait though, if you have it. So people are, you don't like being identified. You don't like people always knowing who you are. You know, yeah. that's, that's, that's difficult to kind of mask when you're like, oh, his eyes change color. I know exactly who that is. Yeah. And, and see, that's the thing too. That's always the first eye catch with people. Whenever I meet people on the street or anything like that, or, you know, even just generally at work, cause you know, I have to deal with lots of people, you know, um, in and out throughout the day. Um, I, I don't normally make eye contact and I have to wear glasses now, you know, now, now that I'm up there in age, I got to wear glasses. And so it's, you know, um, it's funny cause I'll make eye contact with people and it's changed right in front of them where it's gone yellow to green and, you know, customers of mine, they, they'll, they'll tell me, they'll be like, holy shit, your eyes just changed to green and yellow. Are you wearing contacts? And I'm like, no, that's all natural. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, it, it's one of those first things that's always eye catching with people. It's, and it's like that though, like where you're kind of like, I don't like this thing. Like you like kind of flying under the radar. A lot of people would just walk around and be like, look, my eyes can change color. You'd be like the dude that wore 50 armbands on one arm being like, <laughs> look how many armbands are on here. It's like, at least you don't show off about it. Um, you know, it's, Sometimes I do because a lot of people, they think, ah, you're full of shit. Ah, you're full of shit. You know, and um, I, I have shown a couple posts where it's like, you know, like, hey, this is one of the reasons why I don't wear it. And then, you know, on my private page and stuff like that, people will make not jokes about it, but they'll be like, so, yeah, is your eyes really yellow? And I'm like, yeah, look, you know, snapshot posting on there and everyone's like, holy shit. Like, you know, what, what, you getting possessed by freaking Reagan or Captain Howdy or something, you know, from exorcism. I'm like, no, that's just how they are, you know. Um, and it's just one of those things where I know for me, it, it's not a self-conscious thing, but when you meet people and you're engaging and conversating and then someone sees you for a minute, they kind of have that Jack Nicholson shining look because they're just sitting there staring like, you know, because they're paying attention to my you eyes. got that slowly. glint of murder in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so when people start looking at me weird like that, I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> I see but, um, somebody's eye color change in front of me. I'm like, bro, are you about to have like a seizure? <laughs> That's the first thing I'd ask. There's yeah, a rare yeah. percentage of people out there that have um, purple mm -hmm. eyes, dude. It's like a 0. 0.3, 0. 0.6666666667. And it's like a very low possibility. But I'm like, That's badass. If I had that, I would be walking around and showing it off like a mofo. <laughs> you know, it's funny since you brought that up. I think uh, somebody on my mom's side had that. I never got to meet him in person, but they had that years ago. And then you and see I, the person with like the wonky eye and you're like, how'd your eye get like that? And they're like, I stared at the sun for 15 minutes straight. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. what so You burn yeah. off the cornea in your eye. <laughs> burn off some retina, some cones and rods in there, you know? <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it's crazy, dude. Like, cause I mean, that that's one of the reasons why I like wearing it. And it's, you know, at this point now that I've been doing my own podcast, it's going to be about three years uh, on New Year's Eve. And around my area in town where I live, I mostly stay in my part of side of town. Um, a lot of people, they already recognize me because I always go out publicly in the mask because I'll record segments, I'll record. Because the thing that I like to do is that I like to film like announcements. I, I like to hype everything up. Because, you know, in a previous podcast that I used to do, we would just, you know, record and it was just audio. And what we would do is that we make it and then it's like, boom, here's the episode. There was no hype. There was no like, oh, we're going to be talking about this. You know, there wasn't clips of it. You know, when you see like, I guess you say trailers for movies and stuff like that. And they have like the teaser spots on TV and things like that. We never did any of that. And so I learned, you know, doing my own podcast, like, oh, you have to hype it up. You have to, you know, tell people that you're doing this, you know. Yeah, um, put a production behind it. Exactly. You know, and that, that's the thing that I do is that I'll hype up saying, oh, I have an episode announcement coming out. And then um, the way I do my episode announcements is that I tie it in either reenacting scenes from a film 
or what I'll do is that I'll do something different, unique. Like take, for example, my Conjuring episode. What I did is that I have um, a mask that I call, his name's Possessed Billy. And when I design these masks, my main one's called Ouija Billy. Possessed Billy, he's a character who has, who's like a ventriloquist dummy, like from Dead Silence. And he's all painted, you know, black and white with the red swirls. And he has a Ouija board on his forehead. And I call him Possessed Billy because he's possessed and he hears voices. So what I did is that I did my episode on The Conjuring, hyping it up, making it look like, you know, I was doing an EVP tape recording and then the lights go out and then you see the hands clap right behind me like a movie scene. And then what I figured was, oh, I'm going to hype this up because I'm going to bring back this mask. And the reason why I brought back that mask is because it's a fan favorite. Everyone's like, well, how come you don't wear that mask often? Because, you know, every other episode I'll change the mask. So I have different ones. And that's the, the main thing that I always do for the show is that I make all these masks. I buy them like plain Jane ones. And I have mask videos up on my YouTube page where I show how I make them. And I'll wear them. And so what I did for the episode to hype it up, I basically did it where, you know, I have one light on in my house and I made it look like I was talking to myself like a spirit. And then I did voiceovers and then I did like, no, no, like I'm getting possessed. And I was doing like the old school Bill Bixby Hulk transformation, you know? (laughs) And um, that's when I brought out like the character Possessed Billy and hyped it. And I think that's what helped the episode is that people saw that I was bringing that back. But What sucks, though, is that the more production that you put in, the more production you have to do for each episode. And a lot of people think that when you do like a YouTube or a podcast and stuff like that, they think it's just point and click. And it's like, no, 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 no. It's it's a little bit more into it than that, you know? Um, Yeah, there's definitely, for me, I think, like, I don't don't edit any of mine. They're not live mm -hmm. or anything. They usually go up a little bit later. I stopped editing them because I was losing a lot of what we would call real conversation. It's a long process. A lot of finalized podcasts you hear where people edit and they spend weeks and weeks just editing one episode. I Mm -hmm. do so many of these, and the concept of mine is to get conversations with everyone. It doesn't matter who you are, just being able to sit down for at least an hour and talk to you and just be able just to have a conversation because you never know where it can lead you can't do that if it you can only produce one episode a week because then i'll never be able to get a good majority of people so i have to you know i post one every single day sometimes twice a day it's not because i don't care about that conversation it's because that i've had so many amazing conversations so far and i keep having them every single day like one with yourself oh Well, thank you for having me on. I appreciate that. And like I said, man, I've been a fan of your work because I remember when you first started uh, following me on my Instagram page and then we started conversating and I was thinking of your concept and how you did that. And I was just like, holy shit, that's a really cool concept, man. I mean, it's it's the original plan. Like your parents told you don't hop in the car when the stranger offers you candy in the van. And I said, (laughs) fuck it. If he's got peanut butter cups, I'm hopping in. Exactly. You know, that that concept, I, I really do like it, man, because I mean, that, that's something different. And not only that, you get to hear all the in- interesting conversations and all that stuff. You know, you know what would be a good spinoff of a horror movie? What's that? Uber. A Holy shit. Of a serial killer behind Uber. Like, oh, thanks for the ride, man. He goes, oh, I'm sorry, you're not letting me out. I'm, I rated you five stars. You're not letting me out. He just turns around and goes, hey, you've already rated? Yeah, I've rated. Whoa, this isn't your actual stop. And next thing you know, he just drives off with the guy in the car. Fuck, dude. Imagine if they got like the, <laughs> like, imagine an Uber that's a cop mm-hmm. and you can't get out once you get in the back seat. Someone has to let you out. Yeah. Yo, that changes oh. the game. Well, you know, it's funny that you bring that up because I do Uber and Lyft as like a night on the side job. Like, you know, I'll do my normal eight hours, sometimes 10 hours in my normal job. And then I'm like, ah, fuck it. I'll do a couple Ubers here and there, you know, cause I mean, it's, it's good money on the weekends here in town. And uh, it's funny that you bring that up, man, because uh, I've seen a lot of crazy shit in my town, dude. Like I always tell everybody, if you're going to do Uber, don't do it late night. Cause that's when all the real freaks come out, you know? And uh, I could already, I'm already playing it out of my head on how it would be like, you know, somebody pick, gets picked up by an Uber Oh, thank you, you know, and uh, I'll grade you the five stars. And then they try to open the door. And then he's like, all right, well, I'm going to end this. He gets off the app and everything. And all of a sudden, that's when you see, like, the seatbelts, like, lock them in. And then they start driving. It it kind of reminds me of, like, a death-proof twist. (laughs) Oh, my God. Dude, I'm telling you, man. Like, I heard, I've heard some crazy Uber stories coming from drivers and experiences of customers. I know one guy that left his concealed carried gun. It slipped off and landed inside the seat. 
So oh, the guy was driving. Shit. He had to call the guy to come back. He's like, I need to get something out of your backseat. I left something. And the guy's like, sure. And uh, what'd you leave back there? And the dude just grabs his gun that's laying in the backseat. Oh, fuck. Like, imagine the Uber's perspective. Like, holy shit, man. Like, why do you have that? I would trip the hell out, dude. Like, cause I've, I've had some crazy shit happen on my watch, you know, <clears throat> any person I, that argues with an Uber and then the person, the Uber drops them off at their house. Why mm-hmm. the fuck would you do that? Now the person knows where you live. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, dude. You know, that kind of brings up the point of like, that would be a scary fucking film, dude. Cause then you could have like a one hour photo kind of twist, you know, or a pizza delivery guy. That's a serial killer. You order Domino's with the side of, you're not getting that Italian sausage. You're getting a straight up <laughs> knife to the stomach. Stab, um, stab, stab, a whole twist on a porn. Oh, shit. A, and you know, a serial killer pizza delivery guy. Does we, he work for Domino's or does he work for Papa John's? I'd say Papa John's, man, because they, they get the hate. They're savages <laughs> for sure. And you know what would be the twist is that after they're done like killing you, then they take you back to the pizza shop and Put use you your carcass pizza? for uh, for the meat. Dude, yes. <laughs> Are we writing a horror film right now? Shit, we're thinking uh, this is million dollar ideas, man. So if they start making movies like this, hey, y'all know where you heard it from first, right? You heard it from the freaking Saw guy and uh, Robbie. That's who you heard it from. <laughs> I'm not a serial killer, but I would say I know some pretty good ideas where I would be writing stuff <laughs> down on a piece of paper and be like, hey, Charles Manson, did you ever think of doing this? And he's just looking at it like, these are good notes. These are good notes. <laughs> I think I might have did that one time. And during Dude, this I'm time. pretty sure everybody – I put up a picture on Instagram. I'm pretty sure everybody has looked at, at a spinning ceiling fan and thought mm-hmm. what would happen if they turned it up on high and jumped into it. Oh, shit. You know, I used to do that as kids, man. I mean, back in the day – Growing up, they had this TV show called Jackass. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course I um, Jackass. My dad met Wee Man. Oh, no shit. Yeah, I got a signed picture in my room. It's Wee Man saying, uh, it's him and my dad, and it says, you know, good job, buddy. Like, keep on rocking. Oh, man, that's pretty badass, dude. That's badass. I've never met anybody from Jackass, but I know when that show came out, man, like... <laughs> I, I was a kid in high school, and me and my buddy, we would do all the crazy shit similar to Jackass, but we wouldn't record it. We'd just do it for fun, just to talk shit. I remember we would did some stuff, man, and I don't know how the hell I survived in my family. I'm surprised my mom didn't kill me or kick my ass half the time for some of the shit you we on did. a little trip down to the river? <laughs> well, it was more or less like, you know, um, some of the shit that we did, dude, we would... Because we live in a one-story house, and we had a pool, you know, when we moved from one house to another. You know, this was back in 2003, 2004 when we moved. And my buddy, he was kind of like my brother. You know, we've known each other for years. We still keep contact, you know. Um, We did some crazy shit, dude. Like, you know those scooters that came out, like the Razor scooters? They were still hot at that time. They were awesome. They're still awesome. What are you talking about? I still ride a (laughs) Razor scooter, bro. It's Razor or Titan. Yeah, there you go. At the time, like... I don't know. It was, they're still cool. And to me, what we did is that they were remodeling the roof. I don't know what for. So it was flat. So what we did, we climbed up, you know, up on the roof. The pool was probably a clear 10 feet away. And that was at the shallow end. I don't know how the hell we did this. You know, Uh, we both would ride the scooters off the house into the pool. And half the time, I don't even think like, I, and now I'm thinking about it, I'm like, holy shit, that's some height, dude. We had to jump like 10 fucking feet just to get to the three feet side. What you know? safety? I don't know what safety is. <sighs> Tell me about it, man. We did that shit. And then um, I'm a big wrestling fan. And at the time, that's when the whole Attitude Era, and it was WWF versus WCW. And, uh, you know, ECW was getting bought out by WWF. We would do some stupid shit in the backyard because, I mean, it was to the time where, you know, electronics, they weren't as big as they were. So, I mean, you would play and then, ah, okay, let's go outside and do something. We do, we reenact like some of this shit, man, you know, put us through. Cause we had like these old busted up tables. I don't know what the hell. Um, my parents, they're not pack rats, but they, they don't, I guess you could say they, they hold on to a lot of stuff. I mean, even if it's broken and everything. So we had this old broken ass table and it was hanging by a thread and <laughs> I don't know what the hell. Every time that shit would break, my dad would put like the wood glue and seal it back up. And um, he would always get pissed because he was like, who the hell is breaking this shit? Because he has to go and retrieve it and he thinks the dog was doing it. So if he's listening into this episode, like, sorry, pops. <laughs> Nothing's um, better than duct tape and super glue. 
Yeah, shit. Because uh, that was before Gorilla Glue came out, man. It was just like wood glue. It was like the old school Elmer's, and he would hold it together and everything, put this vice and shit to hold it up. And me and my buddy, we do like freaking pile drivers, power bombs. Um, what was the main finishing move? What was it? He, we would do choke slam because he was bigger than me. You know, he Somebody's was like, going through a fucking table. <laughs> Oh yeah, dude. We did crazy shit, man. We Off had a the top bro. Trigger jump your couch. Your parents are like, what the fuck? Sh- shit, dude. One time, um, when Brock Lesnar got big, when he first got big, we uh my parents they had a diving board. And my buddy, he's huge. He's he's like six foot three hundred pounds. And this is back in high school. And I'm, you know, I've been the same size since fucking middle school. I'm five foot five at the time. I think I was like 130. You know, now I'm 150. I mean, but you know, 130, 150, that's not much. And it was funny because my buddy was like, hey, let's try to do an F5 off the freaking diving board. I was like, all right. So we did the F5 on there. And it was funny. We go to the pool, the fucking diving board just cracks in half because of both of our weights and shit. And I'll never forget my mom came out. What the hell are you two sons of bitches? <laughs> I remember going off a diving board. And as I was running off, the lifeguard blew his whistle to tell me to stop. Mm-hmm. Um, because I guess I don't know if there was somebody else in the water or around the area where they weren't supposed to be, mm-hmm. but I couldn't stop because I had so much momentum. So I turned and grabbed the side of the railing and I try to spin myself. And I, I mean, this diving board was a good 10 feet up off the ground oh, and shit. it threw me right off to where like I was either going to land in the water or I was landing on the side of the pool. So I missed and I hit my ribs right on like, you know, like if you were going to take a step into the pool, I hit my ribs right in there. My body landed in the Ooh. water and my side of my chest hit the thing. He just looked at me like, oh my God, I killed a kid. I literally oh, like, I went there and all you hear is <laughs> like you're trying to get air. And like, I was fine. And I turned over. Yo, every time I wanted to go, there was no fucking line at that diving board. That lifeguard's like, no, he goes first. He goes first. Oh, fuck. You know what that means, right? immunity to anything <laughs> i was god of the pool well besides you becoming an x-men um I that reminds broken me rib i think <laughs> it's animantium now right my fucking <laughs> arms still can't go above my head oh shit dude it, it happened it when i was me. 12 my dad was like are you fucked up i'm like yeah i oh, am oh fuck and you know what's crazy though, man? You break a bone once, it's never gonna heal the same again, dude. Dude, I still but, have um, pains in my right arm from when I broke my arm on a trampoline. Oh shit! Get them phantom pains. Damn. You, you lost uh, no, an I, arm. I broke my arm. <laughs> oh shit! I can feel your pain on that, man, because that that reminds me of like fucking Final Destination shit right there. You know? Because don't bring like, up that movie. <laughs> I got a, it, look. I almost got a speeding ticket. Oh, shit. Listen to this shit. And I swear to you, this is a true story. I almost got a speeding ticket, not for going over the speed limit, but for going 20 miles under. What? I was behind a fucking logging truck. (laughs) It always comes back to that fucking logging truck, dude. I mean, I guarantee you, you're not the first person that said, you know, saw a logging truck. It's like, fuck that noise. Nope. And then just- <laughs> I literally told him, I told the police officer, he said, dude, you're going 20 miles under. I was like, okay, is there something wrong with that? He goes, I might have to give you like a warning him as a ticket, a citation, I would say, only because, you know, you're, you're blocking up traffic. Like you're creating an unflow of traffic. I was like, really? Like going under, you're going to give me a ticket. And he goes, but why were you going so slow? And I go, did you see what was in front of me? He goes, no. And I go, it was a logging truck. And he goes, Oh, I get it. And I'm like, all right, thank you. And he's like, well, just try and speed up now, okay? And I was like, okay. <laughs> Damn, that's hella funny, dude. I, I got mean, one. F- that's oh, you like, that's just so, I mean, he understood. That's moved, that, that warned you on, just stay away from cars on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> you got to call me crazy, man, because I, I don't know what it is. It must be something. Maybe I got hit in the head too many times in life, but. Um, my, I, I rarely get speeding tickets, right? I recently got a ticket, uh, last October, right? And it wasn't for speeding or anything. Um, you ever heard of this song called, uh, what was it? Not the, uh, what do you call it? Not the Drake song where it says Kiki, do you love me? Or the, in my feelings challenge. They did this one with a Spanish song called, uh, La Chona. And what I did, I was stuck at this light cause it's on our main strip in town. And like the speed limit's like 60 miles an hour, you know, cause it's like, it's a road that leads all the way up to, you know, like the freeways and stuff, you know, on each end. 
And what I was doing is that they were doing construction on the, on the corner. And so I was the only car that wanted to turn on this uh, stoplight and I wanted to go. And I was like, fuck, I'm not going to get a ticket, you know, going through a red and there's nobody going. And then finally I was just thinking in my head, fuck it, I'm going to do the Lachota challenge. Right. So I put my car in neutral and shit and I got my phone out. I started recording. Well, the dumb thing that I didn't even see my blind ass, um, I didn't see there was a cop behind me. <laughs> so here I'm, 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 you know, rolling with the car that all of a sudden I hear this cop, you know, he's calling through on speaker on the bike and shit. And he's all saying, Hey, pull over. You need to turn over. And uh, I, I, I couldn't hear him, you know, cause I can't hear on my right ear. I'm just getting down, having a good time. And it was funny cause you know, the cop was pissed cause he came up to me and he was like, what the hell are you doing? And then, you know, then he started busting up laughing because I can't dance for shit. You know, I got two left feet and he started laughing so hard. And he's like, you know what? He goes, you made me laugh. That was some funny shit. Just don't do it again. And I don't want to give you a ticket for reckless drive, but I got to give you a ticket. So he gave me a ticket for fucking speeding. And I thought it was the funniest thing because he was like, are you crazy doing that on a, on a, on a busy street? And I'm like, there was nobody. I, you took, know? A, I took a ticket to court because um, it was crazy because he gave me a, uh, a ticket. But when they read it in the room, it was just too funny. Um, I got pulled over and he goes, he goes, uh, he goes, excuse me. You, uh, do you know any, have any reason why I pulled you over? And I said, uh, because you wanted to talk to me. You look a little lonely. I swear to God, <laughs> it was meant to be a joke, but the way it came out was not like that. Mm-hmm. And I actually took that to court because the guy was actually wrong. If He said uh, I didn't stop long enough at a stop sign, which I did. And uh, uh, it, so you didn't want, what? Oh, I go also ahead. got pissed because it was a four-way stop, and apparently at a four-way stop, nobody knows what the fuck to do. Exactly. So um, we ended up going into court, and like he didn't even show up or anything. And the guy read it. He's like, "You ran a stop sign." I was like, "No, I stopped." It apparently wasn't long enough for the cop. And he goes, "And you said, did you really say this to him?" And I'm like, "Yeah, he wanted to talk to me. He looked lonely." <laughs> Shit. And the guy's like, "All right, get out of here." I'm like, "Okay." Oh man, that's hella funny, dude. A lot you know, of times, like you get one of those across your desk, you can't laugh, but you got to be like, "All right, just get out of here." Yeah. <laughs> well, you know the thing that I always tell everybody, and it, it's kind of uh, ironic in a way with me because I mean I'm not a fan of comedy films, but I have this attitude almost like Joker, like I turn everything into a joke. You know, I have to. I mean, that's just who I am. You know, that's my humor. And with me, it's just like you know, I would do the same thing. You know, I. That, that's funny that you, the way that you would present it, because I mean, you know, I can see it all playing in my head. I, I can see me doing the same thing. Oh, because, you know, you want to pull me over because you're lonely. <laughs> you know, I, I've done some stupid shit like that, too. You know, life is just too serious all the time. It's better to have a little bit of humor in it just to make it a little bit uh, more enjoyable, I would say, because if you just live a life that's just nothing but bland and serious, it gets a little bit hard. Exactly. You know, and. The, the way I tell everybody, too, is just, you know, life, life is to meant to have a little bit of fun every now and then, you know? I mean, I, I live for the moment in a way of breaking the ice. I can't tell you how many times I've met people before. And, you know, even, even when now that we met for this podcast, you know, I, I like to, you know, bring up things to kind of break the ice a little bit, to kind of make it funny. Because once you break that ice and get people laughing and get people smiling, I mean, that, that's the way to do it, you know? And I even try to bring that aspect into, you know, my show with the uh, Saw Guy podcast is that I'll say something or I'll reenact the scene. And then, you know, the real side of me comes out where I fanboy over a scene, you know, where I'm talking about like, oh, yeah, you know, then he does this to the guy. And then I thought, oh, shit, <laughs> you know, because I mean, I really do do that. Like I fanboy out like if I'm watching a film and it shows like a brutal scene or whatever, you know, um, case in point, like um, Three from Hell. I recently saw that film you know, when it first came out in theaters, you know, when they did like the three day release and, you know, some of the scenes where they showed some of the, like, you know, either the shooting scenes or when they're in Mexico and crazy shit was going down in the, in the movie. I don't want to spoil it for anybody that's tuning in, but um, some of the scenes, you know, I was the only one in theater where everyone's like, oh, and I was, you know, the only one that said out loud, Oh shit. You know, <laughs> and it was funny cause it broke the ice cause that everybody was laughing with it, you know? Yeah, I mean, um, I like doing that in theaters, man, just cracking something or saying somewhere where it's not like annoying, but it's enough to where everyone's like, that's funny as shit. Like, that's a good point that he brought up. Man. <laughs> it's like a good heckle. You just got to know when's the right time to do it. Exactly. You know, so it, you know, it's funny now that you brought that up. I got to tell you this funny ass story that happened to me. Right. So Halloween last year came out the 2018 remake. 
And well, not remake, but continuation of the first film, right? I go to this movie theater in town. It's like the one that's like on the outskirts of town. Not a whole lot of people go to. It's not in the popular part of town. So me and my buddy went and we're the only two people in there. And all of a sudden we hear like, you know, when you grab a bag of chips and it's like, you know, dude, I opened up sun chips in a theater. I know exactly. Oh shit! <laughs> that's a fucking bag that you don't want to oh, bring into that situation. And then everybody knows where it's coming from. Oh, I'm shit. like, I'm saving the earth technically with the bag. <laughs> It's eco-friendly, right? <laughs> oh, man, dude. Check this out. So we're sitting there, and it's stadium seating. That's where it has, like, you know, one seat above behind. And, you know, now most of the movie theaters here, they have, like, you have to pay for seating, and, and you pay for where you get to choose your spot and blah, 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 all that. Well, this movie theater didn't have that. So we said, all right, fuck it. Let's go all the way up to the back. And I like to sit all the way to the last row in the back underneath the, the wall where you see the picture screen shooting out. We're sitting there, and then all of a sudden, we kept hearing these noise. We're like, what the fuck? Is there a ghost in here? We're like, nah, it's probably the air vent or whatever. And all of a sudden, um, you know, these other people, these younger kids, they came in. They were like 18, 19. There were, there were some older ones. It was funny because, you know, they're all like, oh, yeah, Michael Myers, brah. You know, they try to act all tough and shit. I guess they were on dates or something. Then all of a sudden, um, out of the corner, it was this big fucking rat, dude. Like, I, I'm talking like the tail was like, almost a foot long. It was huge. I saw that motherfucker and I jumped up. I said, Oh, hell no. So I, I, you know, I basically watched the whole movie like with my feet on the, <laughs> on the handrails. Cause I was like, this motherfucker's going to eat me. You know, I mean, he ate this bag of chips and he started going down and then it scared the shit out of everybody and everybody had all ran out and then they ran back up and they called from their cell phones to get somebody in there. And it was funny cause they got this uh, other young kid cause he was going up there with uh, the broom handle and like the, what do you call it? Dustpan, like on the stick. And it was funny because uh, the dude's like, bro, this rat, he ain't going to fit in that shit. <laughs> and it was funny because they, the whole movie, when it started playing, it was playing in the dark. This guy was like trying to chase after this rat. And this rat was going through and, and rummaging through all the food on the bottom. So now when I watch Halloween, you know, the new one that recently came out, I always think of that fucking story, dude, because I'm like, man, I can't watch that fucking film because all I think is about that rat from hell, dude. <laughs> <laughs> straight up rat race bro straight up rat oh race. my god that shit was funny dude i'm <laughs> telling you man it's been awesome having you on the podcast dude I, i'm so happy we could actually get this i know it took a little while to get like it finally set up and everything but it's been awesome having you on dude like i love that i love the concept of your podcast first of all and you're an overall great dude man i want to give you here a minute at the end to promote your content and at least put your links in here so people can be able to find you Absolutely, man. And I appreciate you having me on, man. And, and likewise, I, I love the concept of what you do with your podcasts. And um, to be honest with you, this is my first actual guest appearing on another show. So I, I feel honored and I feel special on that, man. And, you know, yeah, it did take a minute, you know, with scheduling and stuff like that. But I'm glad I came on, man. I really do. You know, and I appreciate that, dude. Um, as far as my show, the Saw Guy podcast, you guys can tune in. Um, it's I'm all over on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, you can get me in any one of those social medias. Um, all my episodes I release on YouTube. And, you know, sometimes I'll put in some other small segments that I kind of cross between Facebook, Facebook exclusive stuff. So, I mean, if you follow me all over on social media, you'll see I have different segments of $5 horror finds. I have from the grave where it's different films that I bring back from, you know, essentially from the grave, you know, talking about why they're a hidden gym and stuff like that. Various different segments, horror talk. I do video episodes for you to enjoy visually. And I also have audio versions in case you want to listen on the car ride home. <laughs> right but, on. You, you uh, know, got it on all the courses. Absolutely. You got to cover all the courses, you know, especially, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I know some people might say it's narcissist in a way, but I'm a fan of my own show because, I mean, I like to listen into it and I get kind of pointers and things like that. And then it kind of brings the nostalgia of like when I remember watching these films, when I start talking about them, like, oh, shoot, you know? <laughs> I like listening to my on the conversations, but I tend to try not to like m my voice in a way. So I'm like, ah, shit. I remember all the conversations. <laughs> so. Oh, man. That's once, cool. Once I start talking, I'm, I hear the criticism of it. I'm like, look, I already know what the other person's story is. How about you shut up, Robbie? I'm like, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know, the way I tell you, though, it's a way of critiquing your work. And so that way you bring on a better product with each new content that you make. You it's know? just hard not to cringe. 
exactly. You know, and I do the same thing for my first episode where it was just an intro, me talking for 30 minutes and an outro to now where I kind of put in different effects, scenes of the film, pictures of the film. You know, it's clear night and day difference, but I mean, that's what makes us better content creators, you know? Exactly. Well, thanks so much for being on, man. And stay tuned for another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast.